This viscast is going to use Ampere's law to calculate the magnetic field from a particular arrangement of a current carrying wire. Pause the video and read through the question carefully. You can see that there's a particular arrangement of a current carrying wire that's been wound into a coil, a toroidal coil, sometimes thought of as a donut shape or strictly speaking a torus. And this question is asking us for a particular arrangement here with capital N turns of wire around our coil, the wire carrying a current of I, to find the magnetic field inside the coil at some location from the centre of this torus. So we can begin by interpreting the question. We're trying to find a magnetic field um, from a particular current. And importantly here we can see there's a high degree of symmetry here. This is a nice circular uniform uh, object we're dealing with here. So the symmetry of this particular problem might suggest there's a application of something like Ampere's law, which is typically going to require some degree of symmetry to use. Let's move on to the develop stage, and typically in the develop stage we might draw a diagram. I'm going to be a little sneaky here and use a diagram that I've prepared earlier. So here's a diagram illustrating the main points that I'm going to be using in my toroidal coil. I have a, a wire basically wrapped around this donut shaped uh, arrangement here. Um, I'm interested in the field at some distance R out from the center of that. Um, and although I've kind of opened up the spacing between these wires here, I am going to assume in my analysis that these wires are very closely spaced, a bit like in the diagram at the top of this question here. Um, so I can kind of ignore any effect about having gaps in between. This is a, a tightly wound coil, uh, and again there's going to be capital N of those coils in there. Thinking about the symmetry of the field produced by each piece of this wire, it's a bit hard to show by drawing here, but you should be able to use your, your right hand rule for what the direction is for the magnetic field from a wire, and you should be able to figure out that by the symmetry of the problem, inside that coil, the magnetic field will actually be uh, running in a circle, a bit like that dashed blue line that's in the diagram there. That must be the direction of the field, and the field will be the same magnitude at all points. We've got a nice uniformly wound coil, and in a sense we're ignoring any effect of this in and out um, coupling of our, of our wire to the coil. So for our reasonable assumptions, we can say there must be a uniform field at all points around on this circle, um, and that it must be pointing uh, tangentially to that circle. And that means that circle itself, that dashed line that's drawn in there, would be a very useful Amperian loop. Remember, Ampere's law tells me that I want to take the integral of b dot dl around some closed loop, and if I do that, that will equal mu naught, the constant of, of permeability, times the encircled current. And again this integral b dot dl uh, will be only really straightforward to do if I can come up with some nice symmetry about what b dot dl will look like. And as I've just mentioned this b field will in fact at all points be parallel to that little piece of path length dl if I make my Amperian loop that dashed blue circle there. And if I do that I get the nice simplification of course that b dot dl will just equal b dl. The vector nature of this has been taken into account by choosing a loop where b is at all points parallel to the loop itself. And this really allows me now just to move straight into my evaluation step where I can calculate the integral of b dot dl. The left hand side of Ampere's law is going to be, and remember b is constant so I can actually take it outside the integral. I'm going to integrate over a closed path that path itself, which will just equal b multiplied by the distance around that path, which for a circle of radius r will just be 2 pi r. So that's the left hand side, which has the magnetic field that I'm looking for, b here. What about this right hand side, mu naught times the encircled current? If you look at that loop, the current that's going in or out through that loop is actually the current from each of these pieces of the coil winding and they're all going in the same direction through the loop. The, uh, the other side, this, this side of the, the winding out here on the outside of my Imperial loop, doesn't go through that loop at all. So I could ignore that, and in fact every other piece of this coil, the only parts I need to worry about are the parts that are going through that loop. And they're the inside parts of these wires, and they're all going in the same direction, and they all have the same current. So I can see that, that my encircled current in this case 
will simply be the number of turns I have in my, in my toroidal coil here multiplied by the current. So now I can put that into Ampere's law here and I can see B, uh, well let's make it 2 pi RB will equal Ni times mu naught, my encircled current times mu naught. And that's reasonably straightforward to rearrange now to say that the magnetic field at some distance r from the center of this toroidal coil uh, will simply be mu naught n i divided by 2 pi r. And that's actually the relationship that I was asked to find. Let's do a quick assessment step here at the finish. Let's just double check we haven't done anything too crazy with our, with our algebra or our rearrangement of Ampere's law. Uh, this expression here tells me that if I have far more turns, if n increases the number of turns in my coil, well, I expect the magnetic field to increase. And that's indeed what my, in fact, it goes linearly. If I had twice as many turns in my coil, I would expect to have twice the field at some location. Um, it also tells me, of course, that if the current in the wire increases, B will also increase. That's what I expect as well. And I also expect, as I get further away from the center, as I get more um, closer to the edge of this toroid, I probably expect the field to decrease a little bit because the wire is tightly bunched on the inside of the coil here, but less tightly bunched on the outside of the coil. And so as R increases, I might expect B to decrease. I might not have necessarily expected that it went like 1 over R. In fact, it goes at a much slower decrease than I would for just a single wire, which goes like 1 over R squared. But certainly I expect as I move to greater distances, and this relationship that I've, I've got here in my final result that I probably should have mentioned is only applicable if I'm inside the coil. Clearly Ampere's law would be a different um, relationship if I was using Amperian loops outside the coil.